Hello, I'm Chad with Southern Wildlife Management. Today's topic is going to be bats. Now, the sign to look for to know whether or not you have bats, and sometimes even when people have bats, they do not even see these signs depending on what area they're getting in. But the first one is the guano buildup. If it's under a gable vent or under a particular entry point, when they're coming in and out and even uh, you know, you know, approaching the, uh, the area, they're going to defecate and produce this guano. Um, typically right under the entrance is going to collect in a pile if it doesn't get blown away, washed away, or swept away. Um, and also there's a discoloration. If it's in a gable vent or any other particular a siding gap, uh, the dirt and oils, everything they collect outside when they're flying around consuming insects gets left behind on the material they brush up against to get into your home. Uh, and also the last one is sounds. Oftentimes they're quiet during the day, but if there's a particular disturbance, vibration, other sounds, the bats can get a little vocal. They have a high-pitched squeak and a chirp almost. It's a very distinct sound. Once you hear it, you will not forget that sound. Now, since we discussed the, uh, the identifying the signs, we're going to talk about what we can do with these bats. Uh, right now, we happen to be in the maternity season, which is May 1st to August 15th. What that means is there are flightless young, and as we know, they, these bats are federally protected. Um, now with the flightless young, they leave to feed the, the bats, the females that is. Um, they leave the beat and they come back, they leave the young behind, and they come back and you know, nurse them and what have you. Now, uh, typically what happens with bats beyond this maternity season is uh, we can put up a one-way valve, and that will let the bats out, but not back in. Now you can see the problem. The young do not leave, the mothers must return to the young. So like I said, May 1st to August 15th, hands off, unless by some miraculous coincidence of awesome construction and location, you can actually remove the bats. But it's just typically best to not even do anything with them. Don't lay any hands on them. They're pretty fragile and they're really good for the environment. Um, now, talking about good for the environment, it's especially good for us because they deal with insect control and what is one of the number one killers of people and disease vectors are mosquitoes. They actually are responsible for about 700,000 human deaths a year. Now, of course, those all are in North America, mind you, even a small fraction. But with that said, mosquitoes still transmit a bunch of bad things that we want nothing to do with. And bats eat a ton of them. Also, the guano does happen to be good fertilizer, so if it does collect outside your house, feel free, you know, let it get some air, dry up a little bit, feel free to, you know, mix that up in the soil, just um, don't grind it up and get that particulate in the air, because that's, that's not good for anybody, you don't want to be breathing in feces, I don't, I'm assuming you don't, so, uh, now, when it comes to excluding these bats, let's say we're beyond maternity season, again, that's May 1st, August 15th, uh, Maybe you still want them on our property because they are really good. Uh, bat boxes are a particularly good option. The trouble is, we get asked this a lot. The trouble is bat boxes, bats are very particular, and you have to be very particular when it comes to setting up, constructing, placing a bat box. Now, there's a couple of facts I'll throw at you. There's tons of good information online. But bats prefer a temperature of 90 to 100 degrees. That's the best, uh, that's the happy bat zone. Uh, now, and it has to be facing south to southeast. Uh, that has to do with sun exposure, a few other factors, I'm sure, um, uh, and ideally six hours of sun exposure. Anything more than that, given Georgia's particularly warm summers, can be a little too hot for them. Anything less may be a little cool for the young ones and for the smaller bats. Um, oftentimes it's best to place the bat box on a metal pole because rodents and other predators like raccoons can scale the trees and uh, you know get in get access to the bat box and when they are land you know hanging roosting they're pretty darn vulnerable like I said they're they're fragile little things and their best ability is the fact that they can fly around especially when other creatures cannot fly around um, so you know it, it's you know, when, when they're landing they're they're just uh, you know it's hands off they're they're pretty vulnerable um, now the other most important I think part of setting up a bat box is it needs to be about a quarter of a mile within water. Uh, this makes sense. I mean, they don't get a lot of moisture from the insects they eat. 
they have to occasionally seek out another source of water. So some really good points to consider. Um, so you have to do your research with the bat box if you're really passionate about having bats around your property. I think it's a good idea. It helps save with mosquito control. Um, it's great for the environment, especially with the pressure bats are experiencing up north with the, the white nose syndrome, the fungus. Um, if you have any more questions, please visit our website. We have a ton of them. The main one is animalextractor.com. Otherwise, you can give us a call, 678-935-5900. Once again, this is Southern Wildlife Management. I was Chad. Have a good day.